everyone. My name is Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about an artist named Jacob Lawrence. We'll learn about his life and his artwork. We'll start by reading a story together, then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today, we're gonna to be reading a story called Jake Makes a World, Jacob Lawrence, a young artist in Harlem. If you've joined me for We Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see a few different clues on this cover. I see a child here and looks like they're holding something in their hand. Not quite sure what it is, but I see lots of people and some people look like they're working or reading or maybe making something. And I noticed that it's very colorful. There's lots of colors. I see yellow and red and blue. And it's making me wonder if this child made whatever it is that we're looking at. What do you think the story might be about based on what we can see? Let's find out. Jake Makes a World, Jacob Lawrence, a Young Artist in Harlem, written by Sharifa Rhodes Pitts and illustrated by Christopher Myers. In the morning, Jake watches the sun wake up. He makes a big stretch and the sun stretches too. Let's take a big stretch with Jake if it feels comfortable to you. Ready? Lift your arms up. Oh, maybe bend to one side and the other. Hmm, that feels good. So Jacob Lawrence was known as Jake when he was younger. Do you have a nickname that you go by? Or maybe if you'd like, you can ask the grown-ups that you're with if they had any names that they were known by to their family and friends when they were younger. With the first light, the dancing dark shadows begin to fade. Then the colors come again. Yellow, orange, and blue on the quilt that covers Jake and his brother in bed. Mother's paper flowers in pink and red. Where do you see the colors that Jake pointed out to us? His feet sink deep into the thick blue rug. When his toes touch the ground, it's like a sky upside down. When Jake moved to this new city, this New York, to this neighborhood called Harlem to live with his mother again, these familiar things from his old home in Philadelphia greeted him like a long lost friend. Jacob Lawrence moved to a neighborhood called Harlem in New York City when he was 13 years old. Have you ever moved to a new place or maybe known a friend who has? How do you think Jake might be feeling living in a new neighborhood? Outside Jake's building, men play chess and checkers balancing the boards on their knees. Older boys sell fruit from a wagon or ice from a bucket, shouting for people to come down and get it. Mothers walk fast to work and more work. Signs promise home-cooked meals for 15 cents and a shoe shine to make you brand new. These are some things that Jake might have seen in his neighborhood in the 1930s in Harlem when he was growing up. Do you have any similarities between your neighborhood and Jake's? A 
preacher in a hat shouts and sings about God. The newsboy tells the stories of the day from downtown and around the world, but tells them with a tune. At the corner, a short man stands on a stepladder, telling everyone how we will get the freedom we need. Most days after school, Jake goes to a place called Utopia Children's House. The word utopia means that it is a special place unlike any other. For Jake, it is. At Utopia House, Jake makes things with his hands. He carves a block of soap into a fish. He sews scraps of leather into a secret pouch. With watercolors, he swirls the shadows that dance on his wall at dawn and the patterns of the rugs in his living room. What do we see Jake making here? takes a stick of charcoal and draws a pair of eyes to see everything the people on the street see. He draws one pair of ears to hear all the shouts and songs, one mouth to carry all their voices. All the faces Jake sees on the street become one face. Jake shows this new face to his teacher, who smiles and nods and says, you should see this, a very old mask from Africa. Jake stares at the mask for a long while, and then he makes his own mask from brown paper bags and glue and paint. When he is done, the mask smiles at him. Next, Jake takes a shoe box, and in the box he tries to fit the whole street. Inside are cardboard chessmen, tiny boys folded from construction paper, and mothers walking fast to work, wearing dresses cut from magazines. He, sta he stacks matchboxes to make buildings and paves the street with sandpaper. Can you see all those details in his shoe box neighborhood? Jake has made a world, a small piece of this place called Harlem. It is now his home. Jake's Harlem has all the shouts and songs and noises of the Harlem outside, but here they are not sounds. They are colors. They are shadows dancing. They are rhythms. They are light. So behind Jake here, these are all paintings that Jake Lawrence went on to make when he was older. And these are all part of a series of 60 paintings called the Migration Series that he made. I wanted to show you this picture. This is a drawing of Jacob Lawrence when he was older. And I wanted to read you this biography, which is a story of someone's life, that the author wrote, so there's a little more information about him. In 1930, when Jacob Lawrence, known to his friends and family as Jake, was 13 years old, he moved to the neighborhood of Harlem in New York City. His mother had moved there three years before, and like many children of that era, Jake and his sister and brother had stayed behind in Philadelphia while she looked for work. It was a time of great political and artistic activity in Harlem, the cultural achievements of the Harlem Renaissance had made the neighborhood a gathering place for black artists and even during the Great Depression, there were opportunities for a creative young person to thrive. Jake began taking art lessons and his talent was immediately evident. His teacher, the artist Charles Henry Alston, said of him that this was a kid to leave alone. Don't let him start painting like you. Don't start cramming him with classical ideas about art or showing him the great. 
Let him go, just give him materials. Jake was a young man when he began to imagine a series of paintings about the great migration of black Americans who had left the rural South and come to New York and other Northern cities. Although the movement was still a recent memory, he understood its importance to American history. By the time he finished the 60 small paintings that compromise the migration series, Jacob Lawrence had made a world bridging the memories and everyday stories of daily life with the unique vision, color, shape, rhythm, gesture that marked the rest of his long career. And here's some more paintings. The end. I invite you to think about your favorite part of the story and talk about that with the people that you're with. We're gonna to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. Let's imagine how we might get there. Since we're learning about Jacob Lawrence today, let's imagine taking our journey with him. How might you get to the museum with a friend you're just getting to know? Maybe you'll ride your bikes together. Maybe you'll have a race and see who can get there the fastest. Or maybe you'll walk and talk the whole way there. You decide. Once you've decided, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going. Ooh, that was a really lovely journey today, going with Jacob Lawrence. I'm really glad that we made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're gonna be doing an experience I'm calling Ask the Artist. We've been learning about Jacob Lawrence through our story today, but there's so much more to learn about him. How do you get to know a new friend? You talk to them and you ask them questions. Since we can't talk to Jacob Lawrence in real life, we're going to imagine that we're asking him questions. So if you'd like, you can ask a grown-up to help you write down your questions. And we're going to use our thinking caps to do our best thinking. So I've got a hat here that I made out of newspaper. And if you'd like to make a newspaper hat, there are some instructions in the resource guide to do that. Or you can grab any hat that you have around your house. So put on your thinking cap, nice and tight. And now, when I'm doing my best thinking, I need to be relaxed. And a way for me to relax is to do some deep breathing. So I'm gonna get into a comfortable position. I invite you to do the same. And we're gonna take a big deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouths. Now I'm ready to think, what do I wanna ask Jacob Lawrence? What have we already learned about him? What would I like to learn more? I've got my notebook and my pen here to do my thinking. I think the first question that I would ask him is, what's your favorite food? Mm -mm. Thinking, thinking, thinking. I think the next question I might ask him is, when you were a kid, did you know you wanted to be an artist? My last question. I think, you know, from what we've learned in the story, it looks like Jacob Lawrence made a lot of paintings in his lifetime. We learned about the Great Migration series. I'm wondering, did you make other types of art too? Now, since we can't ask Jacob Lawrence our questions in real life, we can still try to find out the answers. We might learn a little bit more while we look at his artwork, or you can do some research with your grown-up in books or on the internet. Let's end our experience by taking one last deep breath in through our nose, out through our mouths. You can take off those thinking caps. Thank you for taking some time to get to know Jacob Lawrence a little bit better. I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a close look at this work of art. What do you see?
Let's zoom in to get a closer look. What new details can you see now? What's going on in this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? This is a painting by Jacob Lawrence. It's called Builders Number One. We see a builder here sharpening a tool called a chisel. They are surrounded by many other tools and materials to assist them in doing their work. If this builder could say something to us, what do you imagine they might say? Jacob Lawrence used the theme of builders throughout many of his paintings. Lawrence believed that people could build a better society and that the same creative energy that creates art or carpentry can also create social change. Do you have a person, object, or subject that you like to draw, paint, or write about over and over again? What interests you about that subject? Let's see how Jacob Lawrence created another work of art about builders. Look carefully at this work of art. What do you see? Let's make sure we see all the details in this work of art. What's going on here? Let's imagine we're inside this work of art. What might you smell? What might you hear? Let's take a listen. This is a print by Jacob Lawrence. It's called The Builders. He created it as the poster for an exhibition of his work at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York. What similarities do you see between this work of art and the last painting we looked at together? Jacob Lawrence created paintings that tell a story. Sometimes they were part of a series, which means that there were several paintings of a similar kind coming one after another. A series can show similar subjects and even use some of the same colors. If you could create works of art in the series, what story would you want to tell? If you'd like, you can talk about your ideas for a series of artwork with the people that you're with. Now that we looked at some art together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. So travel with your new friend Jacob Lawrence and get on your bikes, or run, run, run and race all the way home, or walk and talk, and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making our own series of pictures to tell a story in the form of a trifold collage. So we've been learning about Jacob Lawrence, we've learned about his life, his art, and what inspired him. So today we're going to think about a story that you would like to tell with your art. We're going to use a trifold to create our collage, and a trifold is a piece of paper that's been folded into three parts. So we'll have three sections to create three different scenes to tell our story. So for our project, we're going to need a few different supplies. We're going to need one piece of paper that's a little bigger, so it doesn't matter what size, um, but something that's kind of one sheet of paper that you can fold into your trifold. We'll need some other paper to collage with, so I have some newspaper and some other colored paper, a scissors, a tape or glue, I have a glue stick today, and some drawing materials if you'd like to do some drawing. So I'm gonna use colored pencils today, but you could also use markers or crayons or pens or whatever you have at home will work. So to begin, we're going to need to turn our piece of paper into a trifold. So it's very simple. What we need to do is just fold this into three parts. So to start, you're just going to fold one part, kind of about halfway up your sheet of paper, and make a crease, and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. And so now I'm going to fold it up to the line from my first fold. And now I have three sections on my piece of paper that I can use to make three different scenes to tell my story in my series. You can also stand this up if you want to display it that way when you're finished. 
So now to get on to making our collages. So a collage is a work of art that you're just combining a bunch of different things together onto one surface. Um, and you might be cutting them, you might be ripping them, you might be gluing and taping them together. And this is an art form that Jacob Lawrence also used throughout his life. Um, and the first thing you're gonna need to think about is what story you wanna tell. So we saw that Jacob Lawrence liked to tell stories with multiple works of art. And we can do the same thing with our series. So I have some newspaper here, and I was thinking about what story I might want to tell, or what kind of scenes I might want to depict in my art, and I was thinking about my dog. Um, I have a dog named Seamus, and I thought I might include him as part of my series. So one thing that I'm doing is if sometimes in a series you're including some of the same characters or some of the same elements, maybe some of the same scenery. So you might want something displayed more than one time. So something you can do is you can actually take a piece of paper and fold it. So I just have kind of a long sheet of paper and I'm just folding it back and forth, kind of like an accordion fold. And then you can actually cut your whatever it is that you want to be repeated. So in this case, my dog. And then when you cut it out, you'll have multiples of it. So that's kind of a, an easy way to make multiples of something. So you could draw and then cut, or you could just use your scissors to cut. So I'm gonna draw my dog shape here. And then I will cut it and I'll have multiples of them. So my dog's kind of long and skinny. So we'll see how that turns out here. So now I'm just gonna cut along my tracing. And we'll see, some of them might turn out um, better than others, which is why it's kind of fun that you have multiple multiple pieces that you can work with. And you might need a grown-up's help to do this part. Sometimes cutting through multiple sheets of paper can be difficult. And your recycling bin is a great place to look for collage materials. So I found this newspaper and I even remembered in the story it said that Jacob Lawrence used newspaper to create some of his works of art when he was a kid. All right, so here's my dog shape. And now I have a bunch of them, which is kind of fun. So I can decide which ones I want to use. And remember, the best materials to use for this project are the ones that you already have at home. So don't worry about what you have. You have the tools you need to make a collage. So now I can kind of go through and pick out which ones I like, or if I want him to be facing kind of different directions. And then I can create the backgrounds for him. And some of them will be connected too. So that's something to keep in mind if your paper is folded. You can kind of make a paper chain version of your whatever it is that you're making more than once, or you can just cut them apart if you don't want them together. So I like these three, so I think I'll use those. And now I can save these for other projects, put them in my treasure chest materials. So now the next step will be to create the scenes. So I was thinking about things that my dog likes to do, and he likes to take walks around my neighborhood, so I might make some neighborhood scenes for him to walk around in. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out some more pieces. Okay, so I have my 
dog walking through the neighborhood. So I made some homes out of paper and added some windows with newspaper. Now the next thing I was thinking about that my dog likes to do in a day is he loves to go to the park and smell things and pick up sticks. So I think I'm gonna make a park scene for my middle panel here. Okay, so now I have my dog with in the park with some trees and I cut out this stick here. I think I'm gonna color it a darker color just so you can kind of tell the difference between the stick and my dog here. So I'm just gonna use my color pencil and color on top of the paper. And that's a great way that you can add details is after you cut things out or after you glue them on or whatever order you'd like to do it. And remember, there's no right way to do it. You can cut and glue first, draw later, whatever you wanna do. Um, this can be another way to change your scene a little bit and add more detail. So now I have my dog with his really big stick that he found at the park. And now another thing I was thinking about, so my dog's had its walk, he's gone to the park and I think the last thing he would really like to do in the scene is to have his dinner. So I think I'm gonna show him eating his dinner next. Okay, so now I have my dog with his giant bowl of food and he's having dinner and he's had a great day. And I've gotten to show you all of that through the three scenes for our trifold collages. Thank you for joining me today here at We Wednesday. We hope you had fun. I wanted to show you another example of a trifold collage that I made. So this is the one that we made together. This is my scenes of my dog doing things that he likes to do. So taking a walk, going to the park and eating his dinner. I made another trifold collage in a similar way, um, but this time I decided to show myself going to places that I like to go. And a lot of those happen to be in nature. So the beach and going into forests and the park, seeing some mountains and the snow. So you can think about all different ways that you can tell a story through multiple pictures, uh, similar to the way that we learned that Jacob Lawrence did. So we would love to see your artwork. You can share them with us on social media and use the hashtag STL Art Museum and We Wednesday. We hope to see you next time. Keep on creating. Bye.